I'm going to go back to my years in the seminary studying philosophy. Those who do not know uh, part of the process and the training of a priest, uh, you, you work on having a, a bachelor's of philosophy. And then once you have the philosophy, then you build upon with the philosophy theology. So, bachelor's of philosophy and master's of theology. So, I'm going to go to that to, to that realm of philosophy. And, and remembering from my studies and, and seeing it in our modern world, there's one question which really becomes the core question of modern philosophy. And the question is, how do I know that I know? How do I know that I know? It may seem a silly question, but from a philosophical perspective, from philosophy, this is really what uh, began a whole school and a whole new direction of many philosophers trying to answer that question. And it led to what we know as modern philosophy, which is really the foundation and the root of what we are living now as a modern society. So if, if you really want to go to the core of modern society, and, and, and what is at the heart of modern society, it all started with that question. How do I know that I know? Because it could be that I don't know what I think I know. Could be. Let me give you a, an example. So, and the classic uh, modern philosopher would be Descartes. Descartes, kind of. Descartes will ask the question, you know, how do I know that I know? And basically he started questioning everything, almost like destroying the house of knowledge to get to that root that can give me some form of certainty that my knowledge is, is truthful, that I'm not being tricked. So for example, you say, um, I don't know, I'm dressed in green. Well, I know Father is dressed in green. I see it. I said, well, how do you know you're not being deceived? Or that I'm having this optical illusion that you see that it's green, but in reality it's red. What if you're colorblind and you don't even know it? What if somehow I put the chip in your brain and I'm able to manipulate your thinking and, and what you see is green, but in reality is red? Prove to me that what you know is truly what it is, not you making it up or someone messing up with your mind. Now, it may seem, it may seem absurd, but we also know that at times what we thought we knew, it was not really that. So you really begin to question. Let me use a very simple analogy. You know, when you see, if you stand in the railroad, you know how it has two parallel lines. And if you see in the distance, it seems that the two lines join into one. That's what your eyes see. So you may wanna, okay, I wanna go to that place where the two become one. You walk and walk and walk and walk and you never get to where the two lines join. Why? Because it's an, it's an optical illusion. You see that they become one, but in reality they don't. So if sometimes my senses can deceive me, then how do I know that the things that I know is truly what it is and not me being deceived? See, by looking at your faces, now you are in the modern dilemma because you're like, oh my God, then how do I know that I don't know? <laughs> and a whole, you know, this is centuries of philosophy trying to answer that. Now, when you get to post-modernity, after this whole crisis, the answer is, well, we don't know. <laughs> we just know that we know. <laughs> so what? 
And then, okay, let's just move forward because there's no way to answer that question. So post-modernity is pretty much saying, you know what, there's no way of us knowing in empirical proof. So we just got to presume that we know. And let's just move forward because we can't get stuck in that hole. Now, when you put this in the realm of theology, you put it in the realm of day-to-day -day living, you put it in the realm of spiritual direction, of confession, of me listening and, and, and speaking to people, there's a genuine question that often comes up. It's saying something that says within the lines, how do I know when God is speaking to me? How do I know that that this is what God wants me to do. How, how do I know that's the voice of God guiding me and speaking to me? Because, you know, in the past I've been deceived. And truly, there's the voices within you, greed and selfishness and other motives that may think within you that that's the voice of God and it's not, it's another God, it's your selfish God. Or that there is evil spirit really trying to confuse your head. That's what I'm trying to do right now, confusing your head. I'm playing devil's advocate right now, I guess. So how do I know when God is speaking to me? How do I know what it is, what's God's will in my life? Recently, I had several people asking me that question. Father, how do I know? How, how do I know this is the voice of God? And, and it's, it's, it's beyond philosophy because it's a big question. How do you know which is the person you're to about to, uh, to get married with? How do you know what to tell your children when the situation X or Y comes? And what you want to do and say to them is, is God's word, is, is God's knowledge, is, is what God wants them and what God wants of you, but how do I know? So now that I really have you in a knot, let me just try to untie the knot now. Let me see if we can go beyond modernity and more to post-modernity. So one answer is, uh, you know, there are many ways of knowing that is more or uh, that is beyond just the empirical knowledge that we're, you know, it's, life is more than just a, a, a math equation. You know? In math, one plus one equals two. That's, that's, an, a, that's a mathematical knowledge. The empirical knowledge, if this and this and that logically conclusion be, you know, you know there's a phrase that I often um, repeat to myself when I get caught up in, mo in the modern world. Uh, and, 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 and it's the phrase, uh, this phrase, it says, Carlos, their knowledge of the heart that goes beyond the mind. And only a heart that is loved can understand. The more that the heart is loved, the greater that knowledge. And the greater the knowledge also, the knowledge of the head. And the more the knowledge of the head, it should lead to a greater knowledge of the heart. So think of it that your head is not the only way of knowing. Your heart also knows. And has knowledge that goes beyond the mind. How do you know? that that person is the person you want to spend the rest of your life with. Because your heart knows it. And your heart tells you that's the one. Now you may be trying to logically explain it to your head. Well, you know, because he looks like this, she looks like that, he thinks this way, she th you know, and you go through all the logical, your head trying to fill up the gap. But it's the head trying to fill up the gap of a certain knowledge you already have in the heart. I know that's the one. And you try to fill up the gap with your mind, but you already know it in your heart. So there's knowledge of the heart. 
There's also knowledge of intuition. And females, you are masters of this. Mm -hmm. The famous sixth sense. A woman knows that knowledge is powerful knowledge. But if you try to explain it to your head, why do I feel and sense this about that person? You may be stuck for a while trying to figure out why. Trying to convince your mind of it. But in your senses, in your intuition, you already know it. And it's enough knowledge for you to act in ways to protect yourself and protect others. There are different forms of knowledge. Intellectual knowledge is not the only one. Let me give you another form of knowledge. Uh, as an artist, I'm doing a painting. I look at the painting and I just know it needs a little bit more of red. How do I know that? How do I explain to my head that I need more red? But why would I waste time asking and trying to explain my head that the painting needs a little bit red when I already know, as this knowledge of an artist, that I need a little bit of more red? I put a little red and something in me says, ah, that's knowledge that goes beyond just your head. It's important for me to highlight these other forms of knowing because those other forms of knowing have to come into the picture when we are praying, when we're talking to God, when we're trying to discern what is it that God wants for my life. You have to intuit it. You have to sense it. Your heart will speak of it. But another form of knowledge is your own soul. When you hear the words of God and when you see the direction God wants you to go in the inmost depth of your soul with the knowledge that goes beyond heart, mind, intuition, you get this awesome feeling of the knowledge of your soul telling you that is what God wants you to do. And how do you explain it to the mind? Well, you could in time, but your soul already knows that this is the Word of God, that this is what God wants you to do, that this is the direction you should walk. So try to give a rest to your mind, but yet don't give up your mind, otherwise, you know, this is part of a gift God's given. But don't make this your idol, your only form of knowledge. Trust intuition. Trust your heart. Trust your senses. Trust your soul. And in the combination of all the above, you can answer the question, how do I know that I know? By simply saying, because I know. Where do I go with all this in scripture? And with this I end the first reading today is from the book of Hebrew, chapter 8, verse 6 to 13. And the Lord is saying to us, I will put my law in your minds. I will write them upon your hearts. All shall know me from least to the great. The law of God, it's already in you. And what's there is at the inmost depth of your soul. The soul of your soul is the Spirit of God. It's in you. That Spirit is writing in your mind, in your heart, in your soul, in your senses, in your intuition. And is there a writing in the heart and the soul and the mind of every human being? The Spirit of God is within us. Unfortunately, stuck with the question of modernity, how do I know that I know we've put a hindrance to trust that 
the Spirit is already there, guiding you with divine knowledge that goes beyond just your mind, your heart, your soul, your intuitions. It's the knowledge of God that's in you. And you got to trust it. You have to exercise it. You have to play with it. You have to get acquainted with it. You have to trust it. And in trusting and letting yourself be led by it, then you will know that you know because that knowledge goes beyond any knowledge. And if the doubts come to your mind, how do I know that I know? In the Spirit of God speaking, growing, working within you, you'll be able to say, because I know.